Hello my friends and welcome back to another great episode. Today we are going to be talking about how to make a bookshelf. So let's get started. For home improvement advice where we help you save more so that you can do more in your home, hit that bell and subscribe today so that you don't miss a single episode. Today, I'm going to show you the process that we went through to build a bookshelf for our homeschool room. Now, the reason what led to this was we had numerous bookshelves that we had kind of filled to capacity, but what I found out was it was very hard to keep buying the same bookshelf to pre-assemble, whether that was at Walmart or Target. It either was taller or a little thicker, so we decided why not consolidate all of our books into one main area of the house, and so that's what we did. So I want to show you step-by-step step what we did, and hopefully this is a solution for you. We first had to determine how long of a bookshelf we wanted against the main wall. We did have to consider that there is a light switch in the middle of the wall, which is a little wonky. So we decided to stop the bookshelf short of the light switch so that we didn't have to reach through in order to turn the light on. I'll then describe to you the decision, the second decision that we made as far as either making it a straight bookshelf or having it go around the corner. And we did decide on a corner, but I'll tell you that design when we get a little further. I really did not intend to build a bookshelf. I was very happy trying to find something online or in a local store. But as I started doing research, the size and the, and the color that I wanted was anywhere in excess of 800 to a thousand dollars and i knew i just wasn't going to put that much into a bookshelf at this time so left brain did the measurements we ended up buying 12 boards that were eight feet long 10 inches wide and we stained them instead of painting them because again this was a i was i thought i was just going to go out and buy bookshelves and put them together so this was a weekend project. It was a very fast weekend project. So we did stain instead of painting in order for it to dry quicker. One thing that I did learn about stain, and I haven't stained a lot of things because I don't like the wood grain personally. It's not the style that is for me, but we did this because we knew it was gonna dry a little quicker. And so we did apply it with a cloth. We ended up buying a bag of cloth instead of trying to go and see how many uh, t-shirts we could <laughs> use for this project it does take a lot of cloth but once you put the stain on and you do all the sides and the ends which we you know we did for all the boards because we were not going to have a lot of excess wood we were going to use every bit of it and no matter what vantage point you were looking at either from the bookshelf uh, from underneath or if you're looking down onto the shelves we wanted it to be stained so we did every portion of the wood once you do the stain then we went back through and we made sure that we wiped off that there was no puddling or anything on it so that we could get the excess off then we used a lacquer with just a chip brush or you know a cheap old brush because we were going to throw the brush away when it was finished and we went around and did every portion of the stain to kind of seal it in also to help it dry a little quicker and that did work the first boards that we did didn't do it as quick so that's why we went to plan b we researched and saw that the lacquer would really help it it does stink so this is definitely not an indoor project um, for us it was an outdoor project as you can see and um, it did take a better part of the afternoon to do but in the end i was very very glad that we did this because it was definitely a Lot quicker and faster we also might I mention that we did this we did all the staining and lacquer before we cut the boards so that we can make sure that every little bit of it was done now when we did cut the boards we did two foot section and then we did a six foot section and I want you to see right here because when you do cut you want to make sure that since you're doing a bookshelf, you know, you want it to be pretty sleek looking. We used a file to file off any of the edges or rugged portions of the board because those were going to be, um, you know, we're going to be using the shelf at a lot of time. And I didn't want to get a splinter anywhere. So that's something that you definitely want to do before you assemble your bookshelf. The corner of the wall is a little wonky as well. And again, this is old houses, so this is what you deal with. And instead of trying to fix that, we just thought, well, we'll just design the corner around it. So we ended up cutting the base to be two feet in length. And we built a little shelf because then we were going to assemble the bookshelf above that. We wanted to make sure that it was nice and anchored into the wall. And we're Ryobi and DeWalt fans. You can see which one we both like. So 
while Andy put in the drills, I came behind him and did the screws, and that just makes the assembly of it go a lot quicker. Now after, and sorry about the camera going in and out, I don't know why it was doing that, but once we established the base, we brought in the shelves, the pieces that we had cut, and the two sides, and we assembled it inside instead of outside because it was going to be significant as far as it was eight feet tall, and it, it ends up being nine feet tall. Or we have large ceilings, um, but we assembled it inside in order to make it a little easier for transportation. Now, what we did was we put the two sides and then we accounted for the bottom shelf. And so that's why it was, I believe it's 12 inches up. Every 12 inches, we measured from the bottom of the shelf and one um, aside and we have one, two, three, four, five, six shelves. So it ends up being seven shelves when you count the base one. Um, what we did find out was uh, Andy did the pilot holes and then I came around and did the screws, but it is hard to get it to attach um, at first. So that's why you see Andy holding it on because it wanted to wiggle a little bit. By the time we got to the other side, it was a lot easier. Now, hindsight 2020, I still would assemble it inside and I probably would have waited a day or two in between painting and lacquering, sorry, staining and lacquering and bringing it in because it still stunk the house up um, with the with the fumes. But again, I was trying to get it done so that I could get homeschool started and it just is what it is. Once we got the one side done, we came around to the other side. Andy drilled the pilot holes. And this is, again, a trick that we've learned is that if you can have two drills going, one that is doing the pilot holes and the other person coming around and doing the screws, it really does make the assembling um, much quicker. This particular one, this particular piece that we're working on is going to be for the short wall. So it was two inches. And so we did not brace in between, I'm sorry, I said two inches, two feet. We did not brace in between the two feet. We felt that the screws that we used and the distance, the length would not cause any bowing. So we were very happy with uh, this result so far. So, so in this next section, you'll notice it did take two of us to lift it. I thought it was heavier than what I anticipated. And sorry about the camera. It's going to go in and out of focus for a couple of seconds and then it focuses. But we left 10 inches from the wall because we're going to butt the second bookshelf up against that and make a corner so that we didn't have wasted space going in. I just knew that if I had a book up against the wall, I would probably lose it. Um, so this, the design that we chose, I thought was a lot better. But what that left was a 10 inch gap of which we needed to make sure that the bookshelf was safe against the wall so that it wouldn't come toppling down. So what we ended up doing is we drilled into the existing wall on the left side, which was very sturdy. And then on the right side, we created a, we just put a spare piece of wood and um, wedged it up against there so that we had plenty of um, support on that side wall. Then we went to the next side. This span was going to be six feet in length. Again, we built the bottom uh, bookshelf in order to anchor it up against the wall. And we did use anchors underneath of it, which you can't see in this particular picture. And then again, we went through and we used the two eight foot boards and this time we recruited help. So again, if you have children and this is for the homeschool room, they love, at least our kids love to be part of the renovations that we do do. So we gave our oldest a drill and he went around and he actually took my job. So I just sat there and made sure everything was straight. And that is one thing that I have learned from working with the left brain is that you always want to make sure that those bookshelf uh, are the 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 shelves are square because when if not then it gets all wonky and this thing this bookshelf is definitely built to last but you again we went through and did the pilot holes and we did the screws however because it was a six foot span we did want to make sure that it was supported in the middle so we did use uh pieces of the and we had planned ahead for that we we used pieces of the one by ten in the middle of it in order to support the middle so the side the first shelf that we did is a two feet span leaving 10 inches from the wall and then when you look directly at the wall that's a six foot span of which we divided by three feet with a support in the middle just so that we didn't have any bowing because that was really something specific that we did not want to happen
So one thing that Andy did to help us keep the bookshelves in line with the one that was already on that we had already attached was on the inside of the long strip. We measured up and then drew a line so that when you put the cut bookshelf in between, you didn't have to remeasure it again. You had it in line so you could drill your pilot hole and then do your screw. So that was one thing that you want to keep in mind as you are assembling your six shelves to make sure that one, they're the right height and two, that they match the bookshelf that you're going to be jutting, but, butting it up against. And I gotta say it again, it really is awesome to be able to allow your kids to learn how to use tools and to be part of the projects that you do. And in this case, I am hoping that they will actually put their books back on the bookshelf that they helped build. So <laughs> it's one of my goals and we'll see if that happens. Hey, thanks for joining us today on how to make a bookshelf. We wanna make sure that you know in the description below there is a checklist that you can use in order to help with your home improvements. So if you wanna go ahead and grab that today, it's free for you if you check in the link below. We wanna make sure that also please subscribe and hit that bell because we don't want you to miss out on any of the episodes that we bring to you to help you save more so that you can do more in your home. So until next week, we'll talk to you soon.